In the last episode, I told you that the first step of genealogy brick wall busting is to review previous research. Well, do I practice what I preach? Let's look at an ancestor of mine I have lovingly nicknamed Brickwall Bertha. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Melissa Finley. Welcome to Boundless Genealogy, where I help you squeeze every last clue out of the records you find in your family history search so that you can smash brick walls and expand your family tree with confidence and accuracy. Please subscribe and join me here for every brick wall busting episode and more. My ancestor, Bertha Barton, has been a brick wall ancestor for me ever since I started doing genealogy research 28 years ago. I know so much about her life from 1873 until she died in 1941, but absolutely nothing about her before that. This year, I'm going to follow the same pattern I'm teaching you, the one I've used countless times before to break down difficult cases. I'm determined to figure out Bertha's origins. I thought it might be helpful to show you this case study of Brickwall Bertha that I'm working on right along with you as I share the steps of the Brickwall busting process. If you missed the video detailing step one, review previous research, I'll put a link in the description below so you can go back and catch the first episode. So what documents do I need to gather together for Bertha? First of all, I have several interviews I did with my grandmother, Billy, before she passed away. Billy was Bertha's granddaughter, and Billy actually knew Bertha in person until she was in her early 20s when Bertha passed away. However, for as much as she could tell me about Bertha, she did not know her origins. Apparently, Bertha really did not talk about her origins. Next, over the years, I had uh, found the family in as many censuses as I could. I have a tree for them on FamilySearch. I have a tree for them on Ancestry and on my private family history software on my computer. So I, I opened her profile on all of those places and gathered every document. You know, sometimes you attach a document to one place and you forget to bring it over into your software or you forget to transfer it to the other tree. So I collected all the documents from those places. Now a big one for Bertha uh, is actually a record that is technically her husband's record and that is his rejected Civil War pension file. He served from a unit in Missouri but it was a Missouri state unit. It never served under the jurisdiction, I guess, of the United States government. So he never qualified for the pension from the United States government. However, they kept sending documentation after documentation, letter after letter in this pension file. It's about 150 pages thick, and it has lots of information in those letters. And the majority of the letters are actually written by Bertha and not William. The next box to check off is to clear my mind of all previous assumptions and conclusions I might have made about Bertha. As I said before, my first introduction to Bertha and her life was through my grandma Billy. Well, Billy told me that Bertha was of German origin. She told me that her maiden name was Ruschek and that she had a previous marriage before she was married to her husband, William Barton. Billy said that Bertha had a previous marriage to a man named Wessler, surnamed Wessler, and that the daughter Carrie that I had found in the censuses was actually the daughter of Bertha and her first husband. I have found documentation, indirect documentation, about Carrie and whether she is William's daughter or Bertha's daughter from a previous marriage. And I uh, have small evidence of Bertha's first marriage, not a lot yet, uh, but I have absolutely no evidence, nothing firm to stand on about whether Bertha herself was born in Germany or whether her parents were, when they came over, who they were, anything like that. I have absolutely no inkling, no shred of evidence about her maiden name being Ruschek. Those early facts of her life, maiden name, birthplace, origin, etc., even the Mary, the first marriage information about that, is still so sketchy that I need to make sure I'm not running with those assumptions and not opening my mind to other possibilities as I'm looking at these documents. Now that I have gathered all the documents I've collected for Bertha and her husband and her children that I know about, um, and I've cleared my mind of all previous assumptions and conclusions that I've made, 
I need a research report. Remember, I told you last time that this is not that complicated. It's just a fresh word processing document that you will open and just start writing what you found document by document. So here's Bertha's report. I just put her at the top as the subject, Bertha Ruschek Wessler Barton. And she was born circa 1852. And I know for sure that she died in 1941. And then I put the information that I just told you that my grandma told me about Bertha's maiden name, that she had a first marriage, that Carrie, the daughter from the census, was actually from her first marriage before William Barton, and that she was supposedly born in Germany or else her parents were born in Germany, but somehow she had German origins. And then I wrote a little objective or the purpose of why I'm doing this report. And for me, the purpose is to reevaluate each and every document and piece of evidence that I've already collected on Bertha and her life. And I noted that to date, I have not found any um, information, evidence, clues, or anything about her prior to her 1873 marriage to William C. Barton. And then I started my research notes. The easiest records to grab and remember were the U U.S. federal census records. So I started with the earlier, earliest one I had for this couple. They were married in 1873, so the earliest census they would be in as a married couple, Bertha and William together, would be 1880. So here in Missouri, Macon uh, County, Eagle Township, here they are, W.C. Barton, Bertha Barton, M.H. Barton, who is listed as the father of W.C., that's a great clue for him. Walter Barton, age 16, son. Albert, age 2, son. Carrie, female, age 9, daughter. And then Arthur, who is just a one-month-old baby. So I wrote out all the details that the census gave me about this family, each member of the family, for this census year. And then I wrote my analysis. I wrote, um, based on the ages in the census, what would have been the approximate birth years uh, from this census. And I made note about, um, for instance, in this census, it says Bertha was born circa 1850 in Missouri with parents born in Prussia. All right. And I just went through and kind of analyzed all the details that this census gave me. Then I moved on to the 1900 census. Unfortunately, that 1890 census is missing it was destroyed, so we don't have that. Um, but we can skip to the 1900 census, where Bertha is now the head of the household. Interestingly, uh, as I read through this again, something that I noticed, and this is why it's important to go through these documents again and refresh your memory on these Brickwall ancestors, is that she uh, is not listed as widowed. She's listed as married 27 years, but her husband William Barton is not in this census household. So that's an interesting thing to make note of. We'll probably need to look deeper later to see what is going on there. Again, I went through and did notes and analysis on this and I said, is her husband dead or living elsewhere? She's not listed as a widow and that her age is a little bit different than I would have expected based on the 1880 census and that the um, birthplace has also changed between censuses. I moved on to the 1910 census, same thing, 1920, 1930, and 1940, which is the last census, which is available to us as researchers, but also the last census that she would appear in because she died in 1941. Next, I moved on to the marriage record that I had for this couple. Again, the 1880 census shows that they were in Macon County, Missouri, their marriage record is also in Macon County. And here is where I get the clue, the only clue I have right now, about her first married uh, surname. Because the marriage record for her to marrying William Coleman Barton says, this certifies that W.C. Barton and Mrs. Bertha Wessler, Bertha Whistler, it spelled it both ways in the same record, that's very convenient, um, we're joined by me in marriage, May 22nd, 1873. So then I went ahead and analyzed that, that it had both spellings in it, 
that she was listed as a Mrs. Wessler. So this indicates that she was a widow previously married to a man named Wessler or Whistler. Next, I had a couple of land patents uh, directly to Bertha, one in Louisiana in 1890. Thankfully, I have some clues that lead me to Louisiana for this family in that um, census, missing census era. And then um, when she moved out to Oklahoma, I also have a land patent granted to her in 1899. And then I have some death records. So that was the next thing that I went and analyzed. I have her death certificate, which I wrote down uh, everything that stuck out to me, notes, places that this could lead me next for my research. And then I have her obituary, which was a nice long obituary that told a little bit about her character and her life. Unfortunately, not her origins, but um, it does tell me that she moved from Missouri so that was a nice connection, connecting me back to the Missouri family. Um, and then I have a find a grave entry for her and her burial place. Now, Missouri, during the time period when she and William Barton were living there and likely having children, um, their birth records are spotty, just like many of the states at this time period. So. The only child that I have a birth record for this couple uh, that I found to date is the birth of a daughter named Edna, or Etna, as it's spelled in the record, uh, born in 1885, also in Macon County. Now, this one, as I went back and reviewed, I knew that this baby hadn't lived very long, and my grandma knew about this baby because that's one thing that Bertha did tell her about was a couple of her uh, baby girls that had died and that really brought her a lot of sorrow and so she told my grandma Billy about that but something very interesting as I reviewed this record that I had forgotten over the years was right here it says full name of mother Bertha Barton maiden name Bodes well that's not Ruchek now the person who's giving this information I'm not exactly sure of however I think that it's the Dr. T.H. Eagle of Lida, Missouri. I believe he's the one supplying this information, making certification. He was a medical attendant and he's verifying that this was the child that was born. And so I don't know how much he knows about her maiden name, but this was interesting to me. Her maiden name is Bodes. Um, that is much different than Ruchek. So that is definitely something to note in my notes and analysis and keep in mind as I'm doing more searches so I don't um, neglect to search for the Bode's name as well. So here I kind of made a lot of notes on this one about this whole analysis that I just told you about her main name and about further research I could do based on this. So that's pretty much it for the records I have on Bertha. As I was going through and writing my analysis, I did come up with a few places I could search next. I am not going to search those right now. I am just going to make notes here that's separate from my notes analysis so I can remember later without having to go through the whole report. So um, here's some places I want to do in uh, for the research in general in Oklahoma. Uh, for instance, I realized that um, the Methodist church was listed on her obituary, on Bertha's obituary, as the place where she had faithfully uh, attended and was very involved in. So I want to go back and check for those records at some point to see if it lends any more information about her origins. Um, also, the funeral home and the cemetery records for Bertha might be of use. That's somewhere else I have not um, looked yet. And then I have information on Louisiana. Where, could I, where else could I go for that short time period that they were in transition in Louisiana? And then I have a few more records in Missouri. I realized that the couple did own land there. At least they were farmers there, so it's potential that they did. And I have not um, looked at those records yet. Also, their marriage record listed a minister. I need to look more carefully into which congregation he served and look for, merit for uh, further ch church records there. All right, so that's my report. But I also said that William's 
uh, report would be important, especially for his rejected pension file. So I have another research report here. This report is simply to look through each and every document found in William Coleman Barton's rejected Civil War pension application file. And this definitely needs to be its own report, even separate from his other records, because it is a massive file. And then on this one, because the, um, the papers in the pension file are very mixed up in order, and I will do another video completely about this pension file and uh, really work through what to do when you order a pension file. But just briefly, I'm just going through page by page and um, to make things easier for myself, I am ordering these chronologically. So by the date of the record. And there's a lot of details in here that you would not find anywhere else. So that's enough about that right now, but there's my report on William that's also going to help me with this first step. So as you can see, I'm well on my way in reviewing the previous research done on Bertha. In order to do a thorough job, I have to also review the research on her husband, William, and her daughter, Carrie, to see what their records can add to the details of Bertha's life. I've done a lot and I still have a lot more to do in the coming weeks before I share step two with you. Please continue to work on your own project and let me know how your progress is coming in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you again here in a few weeks for step two of the genealogy brick wall busting process.